Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Job Seeker Spotlight. This episode's a little bit different than some of the others you might have seen in the past. Why? My name is Ira Bowman, and I'm joined by my friend, Liz Capants. Liz, welcome to the show. You're my new co-host. Yes, cool. so excited to be here. <clears throat> so for those of you who don't know Liz, we're gonna I'm going to introduce her a little bit uh, in detail here. But first and foremost, she is from New York, and I'm from California. So now we've got you covered coast to coast. I think that's pretty cool. So, yeah. you know, the first thing we should probably discuss is the time. I don't know if this time really works for you and at 6 o'clock your time. My original thought when I scheduled the show was um, – East Coast and Central Time are off work. So if people have a job and they need some help, they can still get it without, you know, worrying about the boss looking over their shoulder. But I don't know if it doesn't work for you. Maybe we can move it. I actually had uh, my friend Bianna, who is in Europe, goes, Ira, I would love to do a show with you or come on as a as a guest for your show. But it's one o'clock in the morning when you're on. And I thought, yeah, yeah that, that, that probably doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, that's tough. But, yeah. Anyways, we can we can talk about we can talk about all that. If you guys are watching this and it's really really late or if it's time just not convenient, go ahead and give us your feedback because you know I'm I'm willing to make adjustments. I know Liz Liz is flexible too, so yeah. You know, I I tried to pick the time I thought was going to be the the most convenient, but now that I have a co-host, we've got to figure this thing out together, Liz. Yeah, we will. We'll we'll get everyone's input and see see what works for for you, for me, for everyone, and uh, yeah excited to be here this is awesome i'm excited to have you what i'm gonna do i'm gonna um pull up your linkedin profile and i just want to like share your link for those who are watching from my from my side of the the aisle here hang on a second share screen anytime you want to share a screen just tell me and i can we can, okay. put, your, we can put your screen up <clears throat> Okay, so cool. first things first, this is Liz. Now, Liz is like me. She's maxed out, right? What does that mean? Well, LinkedIn has this thing where it allows you to have 30,000 first level connections. And that's a funny story all by itself. Me and Liz, who are friends, trying to connect. It took forever. Right. Anyways, um, so what you could do, though, is you can always follow, right? You, there's no limit to how many followers a person has. So if you follow me, I follow you back. That's just the way I do it. I think, Liz, you're pretty much the same, yeah? Yep, yep, exactly, yep. But really, it doesn't even matter if you're connected at this point anyways. The way to get to me, honestly, is to talk to me in the comments. Don't send me a, a spam message. I'm not interested because I don't know you yet, right? Like if Liz sends me a message, I'm right on it and vice versa because we know each other, right? Yep. But if you send me a message and I don't know you, it's going to come across as spam. So it's better if you start to engage with people in comments of posts, show them that you're you know, like a real person and you have a heartbeat and all those things. And then when you send those messages or those connection requests, you're much, much, much more likely to get connected. So, Liz, let's do this. Because I don't know who knows you, and I don't want them to feel like, well, why is this lady his co-host? She, you know, who is who is she? Who is she? Yeah. yeah. So could you give us a couple minute rundown, you know, kind of of your background? Yeah. And if you want me to point anywhere on here, I can. But I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna take this link and I'm gonna put this in the um, in the comments. So we are on, just so you know, we're on Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. So we're on all three. So I'm going to put this on YouTube and Facebook first, and then I'm going to come over and put it on LinkedIn. And our buddy Bob Feathers is in the house. Hello, Bob. Nice Hello. to see you. we got all kinds of people watching. We've got somebody uh, joining in from the, the DMV. That's cool. Must be on the phone uh, <laughs> from the Washington, D.C. area. we got Bob, our buddy Bob, who's up in Boston. Somebody from Argentina. We got Dayton, Ohio in the house. And Timothy, you might be interested to know, I actually used to live in Fairfield, Ohio, which is right outside of uh, Dayton. He knows that off Highway 4. A lot of people, if you're not familiar with Ohio too much, it's in between Cincinnati and Dayton. So anyways, we got we got a good slice there already. Yeah. So if you're looking for Liz, find her here while Liz, I'm going to give you like Three minutes. I'm not going to say anything. So. Okay. <laughs> no. All good. Uh, great to, to be here and see Bob. Uh, familiar face here. So I, uh, for those of you that don't know me, I've uh, been in the search recruiting. I do a lot of advisory consulting work. Uh, right now I work globally. I've been running my uh, practice uh, since uh, 2008. I uh, came from another search firm. And of course, 2008 and nine was a, a tough 
a very tough market to uh, to recruit in, but uh, hung in there and grew the business um, over the years. Uh, we work with a number of different industries, industry agnostic. Um, we now, I, I, I have a very holistic um, approach to hiring. Uh, it includes marketing, how to market your firm, uh, to put a strategy and process uh, behind uh, those hires, and then also work with uh, executives um, or managers, it doesn't have to be executive level, but that are in transition. Uh, I do a lot of um, referral networking, um, connecting them with companies, and also some of the basics of the um, fundamentals of, of starting the job search. It might be uh, how to, you know, retool your your resume, how to, if you're looking to pivot, uh, it might be, of course, um, you know, I was really the more of the pro here on the LinkedIn content and strategy and how to present yourself. So we have a very holistic approach to um, what we do here. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, but, I'll pause there. But that's what made you, in my mind, like an obvious choice to be my co-host. Right. I've had a lot of people who've asked me if they could do this, but they didn't have the pedigree, I, you know, and I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings or offend anybody, but you know, this is not easy to do this. Right. And right. there's a lot to it. So, you know, I feel like that we're equally yoked. I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't consider myself out of your depth and I don't consider you out of my depth. I think we, we make yeah. a good pairing. So I'm excited yeah. to have you. Um, well, probably what we'll do just as an order of operations, I'm probably going to most of the time let you go first and then I'll play okay. clean just because, you know, I was raised ladies first. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, I try to try to have a little chivalry still. Um, but plus it also will be nice for decorum's sake just to have kind of like, hey, this is how we don't really do it. But uh, I want to also, because this is your first time on the show, um, you have a website. So I'm going to pull this up and just let people know where they can go to find you professionally if you know if they want to learn more about your business or whatever. So here it is, it's ebcassociates.net. And I'm gonna again put this, um, find Liz's company here in the comments. And I can't um, talk and type at the same time. At least I can't, I can't say something other than what I'm typing, which is, yeah. yeah. It's been, a, it's been a long week. I know. You know what threw me off this week, Ira, was we with Monday being the holiday. And uh, it just uh, was a, a get together with a uh, client. So it just uh, I feel like this week has been uh, probably for everyone, too. It's been hard to sort of get back in the in the swing of things. But it's also been very busy. So did yeah. you have a, did you have a good um, Fourth of July holiday weekend? Yeah, we did. It was uh, it was nice. Had a cousins uh, get together on Sunday, and then client party and some some downtime. So it was it was good. How, how about yourself? Um, so I'm a big like I don't talk about this a lot on social media, but I'm a big church guy. So I was actually because Fourth of July was on Sunday this year, so I um, was at church. Now because I'm one of these technical guys, right? I I was really busy. I did photographs for the event that we had. I did my drone because I needed to get yeah. some video for the drone. And then I run the screens and the social media during service. Uh, so it was a, it was a busy day, but we had a church barbecue in the afternoon. And then that night we had some friends over and our balcony. So we live on the side of a hill in our balcony, our outside balcony, you can see the whole Valley. So we don't have to go anywhere for fireworks, which is really cool. Oh, nice. And this is our second 4th of July here. So we kind of knew what to expect. Last year, it was like sensory overload because literally there's 100 fireworks going off kind of at the same time because I live in Southern California. It's a really uh, dense, populate, densely populated area. So, yeah. yeah. So it was a lot of, it was a lot of yeah. fun. But yeah. we, don't, we don't have to pay for parking. We don't have to worry about, you know, any of that stuff. The kids got to go to the bathroom or, you know, yeah. you get lost or if they're afraid of the noise, they could just go inside. So yeah. So perfect. Yeah. Nice. I, actually worked, I worked on Monday um, because as you know, I was on the East coast for so long. I'm still going through the photos that I shot. I shot over 5,000 photos, Liz, while I was out wow. there. Wow. Oh my gosh. So wow. I'm, process, I'm processing, processing, processing. And uh, yeah, it's, it's kept me busy. And then I was just in Phoenix. So I got home yesterday. I let, I was there on Tuesday and yesterday. So yeah. I just got back. So 
now I've got 500 more photos to process. It's like, yeah, wow. No, no sleep for the wicked, but so that's kind of what I've been doing. But anyways, all right. So if anybody's new to the show, right? Maybe you're uh, one of Liz's crowd and you've never seen the show before, but you like Liz, welcome. We we both are appreciative that you're here. Uh, the show really we're trying to do, it's not about Liz and Ira. You know, it, it's great that we're here and, and we have some experience that we want to help. But the show is not about us. It's about you, the job seeker, the employers and the recruiters out there. We want to help bring you all together. Okay. Yeah. So the show's job, it's really for the job seekers primarily. Okay. So the job seekers, I offer you two different avenues that will help you and we'll do it right now. And it's free. Okay. So you don't have to pay anything. You don't have to like call us and give us your email or there's none of that, Liz. It's just right. straight free help. What do we do? First and foremost, we're trying to get people to come on camera with us because you guys need to get comfortable on camera. Liz and I could talk at nauseum about how the, the world, the paradigm has changed because I know prior to COVID, a lot of you never had to do video conference meetings, right? So you didn't, you weren't set up for it. You didn't have the lighting, the background, you didn't know the etiquette, all that stuff, but that's changed. The expectation now is Liz that everybody can do it. Yep. Right? Yeah. So you're going to interview most likely over a video conference. So if you don't know how to do it, if you're not comfortable doing it, this will give you some practice doing it. We can give you advice on your background and your lighting if it's not good. Um, but also, Liz, how many people would you say, okay, let's let's go, let's just take this back a little bit. Prior right. to COVID-19, if you had a job uh, position opening up, right? just like, you know, an admin assistant, PM, something like that, just a run of the mill job. How, how many people would you expect to apply for the job? You know, let's say yeah. in the first. Yeah, I would say, you know, on average about uh, two to 300, sometimes more, uh, the applicants that are coming in. So it's, uh, it is uh, highly competitive and hard to differentiate yourself when you're up against all those other people. Yeah. And, similar. So, yeah. and I think it's actually more since COVID. Yes, definitely. Right? So, pre, so pre COVID, it wasn't quite as bad. It was still competitive. Don't get me wrong. It was a competitive market. Yeah. But with COVID, it became more competitive. So the fact is you could be like on paper, the perfect candidate and still not even get the interview because what do yeah. you and I know that most job seekers don't know? There's only so many resources to do the actual interviews, right? Like you yeah. don't have robots doing interviews. Well, some right. people talk about the ATS there, but anyways, <laughs> that's a different, that's another uh, topic uh, we'll do. Yeah. Yeah. But one of the, one of the things that you can do to get a leg up is to build this rapport with folks. And one of the things that they want to see is your communication. Like nobody wants to hire a toxic employee. Nobody wants to bring somebody in and disturb the apple cart. So if they can see you, if there's some way for them to see you before they even engage you in an interview process, know, you know what? I like the personality. I think they would fit in my team culture, right? Yeah. They're not going to, they're not going to, they're not going to be a bad fit here. Um, especially if you're trying to go for a foreign placement, mm -hmm. like I want to move to a foreign place where maybe English isn't the first language, or maybe your native language isn't English and, and English is the first language is probably more common. Yeah. But anyways, if they can get kind of a sense of who you are and your personality and your communication, all that stuff. Yep. You have a leg up, you're like, okay, yep. well, I'm going to give them an interview because I kind of got a feel for who they are. If you're not good on if you're not good on video and you don't show them yourself, you you don't have any advantage. In fact, you could be at a disadvantage because there could be some faulty assumptions. So anyway, all that to say, we try to bring you on the video so that we can, can help increase your visibility. Cause look, thousands of people will watch this every week. I see the data every single week, weekend and week out. We've never had less than 2000 people watch this show. Right. Yep. So powerful. And, yeah. And how many recruiters are you connected to Liz? Many, uh, many, many recruiters, many yeah. HR people. Yeah. So. Me too. I know, I know out of the 30,000 connections that I have, I have 5,000 first level connections with recruiters. Alone. Oh, wow. wow. Right. 
So yeah. if you're a job seeker and you're trying to get exposure to recruiters and you're connected to me, you've got a pretty good head start just right there. Right. Yeah. But if you come on this show and show people that you're professional and you know, you're semi-intelligent, you're going to give yourself a good leg up. But also, like I said, it's good practice. The other thing I'm recommending just by, again, all by way of introduction is that people would take a video three minutes or less introduction and put that in the features section of their LinkedIn profile. First thing, because, yeah. you know, again, I want to see you in action. And if I can start to build a rapport with you through that video with, you know, without being spammed, I'm probably more likely to, to give you that interview. Yeah. The second thing we do, because a lot of people are shy, Liz. They're not like me. They're shy. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're not shy. I know that. Right. So, uh, so anyways, a lot of people are camera shy. I get it. So what we do is we offer free social media profile reviews. I've never had anybody ask, ask me to review their Facebook or their, their YouTube profile, but I do get LinkedIn profile requests all the time. So what you do is we need permission to do it. Okay. So what you have to do is go in the comments and say, Hey, Liz and Ira or Liz or Ira doesn't matter. Either way we respond. We respond collectively here. Uh, say, Hey, would you do me a favor and review my profile? We'll actually bring it up just like we did with Liz's right here. Like I'm just going to share my screen. So we would pull up your profile and we'll go through it. We're going to look and see if you have a cover photo. We're going to look and see what your headline says. We're going to look down here and, and see, you know, what kind of activity you got going on. We're going to read your about section and look at your experience. We're going to try to give you some tips. It's not an exhaustive thing. You know, we usually spend two to four minutes on an individual review, but we'll give you some homework assignment. Then if you're smart, what you do is you go and you do the homework, come back next week and say, hey, remember me? I was on your show last week and you told me to do boom, 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 boom. And I did it. Can you look at it again? Why is that so helpful? Because now you've got exposure twice for free. And again, you didn't have to send us anything. You just, you know, do the work. My friend, uh, Mariela Stockmall was on the show three weeks in a row because she came on. I did a profile review. She did the work. She said, hey, I did it. Can you check it? And I did. Well, then I found some more stuff. And mm -hmm. so I said, hey, do that. And so she did. So she was on it three weeks in a row. So anyways, that's the, that's the idea. Okay. Yeah. So let's get to it. If you're in the audience and you want a profile review, then now's the time. Copy the link to your uh, profile. So just copy the website address, the URL, and send it to us and say, please review my profile and we'll get started. Um, while we are doing that. I was just going to add something, Ira. If yeah, you don't, uh, um, just your, your point is so valid because I video is so powerful. We all know I was, uh, I was on LinkedIn. Uh, surprise, surprise. I know you're probably surprised to hear that, but I was on LinkedIn the other day and I saw this, um, this candidate, this, this, this uh, person had posted a video and it caught my attention. It was so well done. It was only about maybe a minute or two, but she was a recent college grad. She was introducing herself, what she had done. And it was so well done and so, um, so professional and, and, and such a great communicator. I would, it really was, I was like, I would definitely be interested in reaching out to her because that made such an impression. So to, to your point, Ira, it's so um, it's so in, it's so critical and such a, a great first step in this whole process, how you can stand out from all the other applicants and, and really, um, you know, show who you are. It's, it's, uh, it was so well done. I'll have to find it. I'll send it to you, but yeah. Yeah, no, it, it's yeah. strong, especially like for those of you who are trying to do any type of career pivot. Yep. You know, where, you, where you're counting on your soft skills to, to carry you home. Yeah. So you better, you better have a good interview, right? Cause right yeah. now there's so many people pretty much in every category that are vying for these jobs that it's really tough to get a bridge, you know, to get that, that bridge job or to pivot. It's tough unless you know somebody. So that's where networking is so, so important. Like if you meet a Liz or an Ira and you know, you can convince us that you're capable of doing this job, then we know people we can put you in contact with and we can give you our, our, you know, seal of approval. And that'll get you the interview. 
Now, if you do a good job in an interview, now you've got a legitimate shot at the job, assuming you're asking for the, the correct amount of money, which is something a lot of people don't talk about, which is something maybe we could talk about today as yeah. a topic if you like. But, you know, that negotiation part, you really do need to do your homework. You need to know what the market will bear and you need to be not so far below it and not so far above it. You really do need to be somewhere kind of in that in the range. Otherwise, they won't take you seriously. Like, you know, if, if you're if applying to a, a VP of operations for a, a job where they're used to spending one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year in salary and you ask for seventy five, they're like, what is this person a joke? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Or if you ask for three hundred thousand, they're going to be like, well, you know, you're crazy. OK, good luck with yeah. that. Right. And yeah. they're not going to really come to the table. Right. But if, you know, if you say 120 and they're new, used to 150, they may be like, oh, cool, we'll get a discount. Or if you said 180 and they're used to 150, well, now there might be some some negotiating there and you might actually get closer to 180. But yep. that actually just happened with my brother in full disclosure. Oh, really? Yeah, my brother just negotiated. He started a little high because he assumed they were going to come back at him. They actually just gave him what he asked for. Right. And, and you know what's happening now, Ira, uh, um, the uh, so a lot of companies are are doing that because as we're coming back uh, out of uh, this, uh, you know, work from home and go back to the office and, and a lot of uh, employees and candidates wanting to have that flex uh, work arrangement. But if if the company can't do that, they're sweetening the deal and they're coming up with. Uh, you know, meeting them at their requirements. So there's there's a lot of that happening uh, now. It's really becoming a more of a candidate and employee driven market. It's been uh, interesting to see the shift in the past couple of months. Yeah, it's so, uh, with the great resignation and everybody, yes. everything that's going on. It is interesting to see what's happening. Yeah. I don't know if you can see the screen, but Bob Bob said the Liz and Iris seal of approval. You need Ooh. to trademark that. So that's cool. Now I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to show this. I. I forgot to put to join us quick here. There's a link. If you want to join us and have uh, an impromptu interview, basically, Liz and I will ask you who you are and what you do. And, you know, it's just simple yeah. things like what do you bring to the table? You know, yeah. we'll have you on for three or four minutes. And it, it basically would just be like a mock interview. Now, what I've always told people is if you want that, because I record these shows, I actually can can sl splice that up for you and send it to you and you can put that as your featured video and i gotta tell you not only would you have me i have a large network you would have liz guess what she has a large network too so you would have two people with really large networks featured in your feature video that could probably be pretty cool and again it's free you don't have to pay anything yeah. i won't charge you to splice that video up and send it to you it to just be my gift for me to you so anyways if you want to join us there's the link to do it. You would click on it. What will happen is it will take you into my green room. And once I can see that you, you know, you're, everything's good to go, we'll actually bring you on. I'll introduce you. And then and we'll have a quick conversation. Again, yeah. if you're looking for a profile review, what is a profile review? Okay, a profile review would be, I want to, I'll review myself, I guess, for a second. Yeah. Just to give people, okay. just to give people a sample. Okay. Yeah. So what I do is I will bring up your, profile just like this now i'm live so it doesn't have my cover photo there but trust me i have one and what it is the cover photo says exactly what i do i think a lot of people miss on that like it says social media manager has a picture of me with my camera it doesn't tell the whole story but it gives you a feel for what i do so now a lot of you are not graphic artists i totally get it in fact liz had not seen this before today because i took her profile photo and added it that's one of the advantages of being a, a goofy graphics guy like me i can do this stuff but i taught on youtube how to use canva which is a free program how to edit your linkedin cover profile photo your cover photo and your profile photo if you want so if you need that just go to the ira bowman channel on youtube and the video is in there you know it was on a marketing monday it was it's another show that i do but anyways so then what i'll do is i'll come in and we'll look at you know like your headline and so here's a, a tip, like in the headline, a lot of people are using this as a job, their title, which is fine, I guess, if you have a job. But if you're a job seeker, your title, you don't have a title, you're a job seeker. So mm -hmm. what do you want to put in there are think about keywords like with SEO. Think about a Google search. In this case, it would be a LinkedIn search, but whatever social media you want to be found. 
when they start typing in, let's go back to admin assistant or project manager, or in my case, graphic design. So what did I do? So right here it says, this is because I'm not a job seeker, I'm a business owner. So first thing I do is try to tell them, okay, this is what my company does for you. I can help build your business website and social media traffic. That's what I do. Now, specifically, if they're searching, they're not searching for that, but they might be searching for social media management. They might be searching for website, for graphic design, for photography. So I've got in there the things that I do so that if they search for that, I've got a puncher's chance of being found, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. that's, that's the headline. And then from there, it's just about um, the featured. Because what I learned a long time ago, Jared Weiss actually taught me this a long time ago, back in 2008, 2018. He said, Ira, the average profile view on LinkedIn is somewhere between six and seven seconds. And I thought, wow. So mm -hmm. someone found me and they're they're going to come on for six or seven seconds and that's it. What can I do to capture their attention? And that's where I started to figure all this stuff out. Well, back then the featured section didn't exist. I love the featured section. And this yeah. right here is what I'm talking about. If it was me and I was a job seeker, I would have an introduction video right here in the very first spot. Okay. Yeah. Now, what do I have here? I have something a little bit different. I have this because again, I'm a, I'm a business owner. I have this link that takes you to my website, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're a business owner, that's a free backlink, by the way, it's just another, another smart way of saying, here's a way that people can find your website. But then if you slide through it, I have a picture that shows you what I do, the six different services I do. And then if you keep going, I have videos and all kinds of stuff. So what I recommend people do right here is, the video intro video first and then if you have a degree or any certificates take a picture and put them there that's what i recommend next because now you're trying to separate like hey i'm more than a, a claim i'm an expert i'm a guru i'm a blah 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 it's like no i have uh, uh, a microsoft azure certified right or whatever your thing is maybe you have a master's degree maybe you have a double master's i mean whatever it is Put that stuff there. Any certifications that you've got, any uh, degrees, I would take pictures, put them there. And then also, I like to see photos of you in your environment. So if you say you're a good leader, you know, it would be good to put there a shot of you up on a stage doing a presentation in front of a crowd, something like that. It's a great idea. Yeah. So yeah. Feature, featured, it just seems like people are kind of like not, they're not using that. And mm -hmm. I don't understand it. Yeah. So the about section, what I recommend people do in the about section is tell me where you are now and what you want to do moving forward. This is not a historical thing. This is a, a, a now moving forward thing. Paint the picture. The only caveat I make to that, I think this is a good place to put any quantification. So like if you've won an award for a high achiever, you know, let's say like you helped reduce uh, accidents. Let's say you're in facilities and you help reduce uh, accidents in your operation by like 35% over a year, or maybe you're a salesman of the year for 2017, or maybe you, you grew your, your territory by, you know, 300% over five years, whatever. If you have quantifications, I think that's a good place to put them. Um, Cause it helps just quantify that. You, again, you're, you're more than talk. Now your resume better back all this stuff up. And when they interview and ask you for details, you better be able to explain it. You can't just make crazy statements. But this is why I don't think in the about section, people need to go into historical data because your experience section is going to tell the story mm -hmm. for what you've done in the past. Right. Yeah. So, you know, here I've been the owner here. I've been the owner here. I was a director of sales and marketing here. I was an account manager here. I was a regional sales manager and, you know, on and on. And then I've got my education too. Like, okay, I went to Liberty university. I went to San Jose state. I got to my bachelor bachelor's of science. It's right there. Like, I don't need to tell you in my about section that stuff because I'm assuming they can read this thing. I really like too. skills and endorsements, 50 of them, use them all mm -hmm. and don't waste stuff like on Excel and word and, you know, use ones that think again, keywords. What are, what are stuff that people like a recruiter would be looking for these skills in the candidate. If you're going for that job, that's the kind of stuff that you need to have there and get your friends to endorse you. I actually, when I started Bowman Digital Media, I didn't have WordPress 
in my skills because before that I was in graphics and sales, not building websites. But at Bowman Digital Media, it's one of the things we do. We build websites. So I took the um, WordPress skills assessment and passed for LinkedIn. And then I put it up here and look, I've got 71 people now who have endorsed me, which is kind of nice. So mm -hmm. you don't have to take my word for it. You actually could take the word of 71 other people. Now, I know a lot of people say this doesn't hold weight. It's okay. What does really hold weight still are these recommendations. So you yeah. come down and you get people, if it's a new skill, to also write you a recommendation for people who have seen your work in action, right? And I've yeah. actually I've actually done work for Brent Wright on his website. I built Joe Stepke's website. I mean, I could go through the list and we, yeah. we, we could hey, go. I just want to add something, sorry. And, and that's that's so key right right here. As a job seeker, when, when you get to get, go through the interviews and then you are asked for references, right? You should always be building them on here on LinkedIn as you go. So it's as you, you have them ready to go before yeah. you're even asked for them. Because uh, instead of giving references to that pr prospective employer, you can say, you know, here are my recommendations. Here are the references. So always be building that. And, and um, not just when you're uh, going through the interview process, you want to always be building and asking for references, you know, as, as you go as an ongoing basis. Yeah. People sometimes forget to do that. And then, but it's important to kind of build that up. No, hundred so, percent. I, yeah, I, yeah. I don't understand why that is a stumping, a stumbling block for people anymore. I know it is, but yeah. it shouldn't be because of what you just said, a hundred percent. Yeah. Like when you, when you, whenever you win an award, or you get recognition like employee of the month or anything like that, you should go to the people that you're working for at that time and say, Hey, can you write me a, re a letter of recommendation or referral for LinkedIn that I can put on LinkedIn that references this? Because then it's not you saying how great you are. It's somebody else who works with you. That's the thing about the re references and the referrals on LinkedIn that make them so strong. These are people who have actually worked with you or for you. Now, some companies have people that are just, they're not very helpful. They're not very friendly. I get that. The environment is kind of toxic. And I've worked for a place that was like that too. But you can still get references on LinkedIn from yeah. vendors. Yeah. So maybe it's your clients or people, you know, if you're like you're in procurement or whatever, and you have people that you're, you're buying from, you can do it either way. So it can be, you know, your peer, it can be management, it can be a vendor, or it could be a client. Yeah. So as long as they worked with you in some capacity, it holds weight. And I've talked to countless recruiters about this. They're like, I read the skills and endorsements are basically a waste of time. We don't even look at them. Now, I know in LinkedIn search that they actually still count that in the algorithm to list what order you show up in. So they're still important, even if they don't help you with, in the eye of the recruiter, they help the recruiter find you. So that's why they're important. But the reference, the referral is key not only on LinkedIn, but then take that, usurp that information and take that with you to um, the job interview. Because if they've given you a public endorsement referral that you can put on LinkedIn, they're, that's exactly what they're doing. You don't have to hesitate in yeah. using those as references. Now, if you think maybe they've changed their mind and you want to ask them because you don't want it, you don't want, the worst case scenario is, you know, when somebody calls, like, let's say, for example, Liz was interviewing me for a position and I give a list of these things and then she calls one of them to go, I don't even really know Ira. Right. right. That, yeah. would, that would be bad. That would be so, not good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, don't let people write you a reference that don't know you. And I actually I have I have gone through. I hate to say this because it might sound rude, but there's people who have written them for me. They really don't know me. They're fluff and I'll either yeah. just ignore it or I've deleted them. Like I go through it and go, yeah, it doesn't fit. In fact, when I, I did my pivot from print sales over to Bowman Digital Media, I was like, yeah, some of these, they're no longer helpful because I'm not, I'm yeah. not going back into the print game. So yeah. And <laughs> likewise, I, I've had people reach out to me and ask me to, to give them one, but I don't really know them. So I, I can't really give uh, any, honest uh referral or recommendation if i haven't had any experience but i've had several people uh who've asked me that you, you can't you can't do that so 
Okay, does anybody have a question for the show? We haven't had anybody ask us to do a profile review, which is weird because usually by this time I've done three or four of them. But maybe you guys yeah. are fascinated with the new co-host. So that's totally cool. <laughs> I get it. Um, so if you have any questions, if you want to come on the show or if you want a profile review, we're open for anything. Yeah. But just to keep because we're halfway through the first episode here with Liz. So, Liz, let's do yeah. this. We'd what love to hear from you. Yeah. Yeah, because this is this is designed to be an interactive show. This is not yeah. just me and Liz talking, although if it, if it turns into me and Liz talking this week, I'm okay with that. But let me ask you this, Liz. So you're in this space. You live it every single day. With COVID, well, actually, you know, the world is starting to open back up. So let's do it this way. What's something, like, that's happening? What do you see now? Like, you referenced earlier that it's becoming an employee-dominant market, meaning – they're kind of in the driver's seat because before, for the longest time, the employers were completely in control. So let me ask it this way. What do you think has made that that switch flip? Yeah, yeah what, great question. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, what was the rest of that question? I was sorry, I mean to cut you off. So uh, I was going to say for the people that are watching, the job seekers that are watching, and maybe that's why it's slow right now because they're like, Ira, I'm not having trouble getting an interview, right? So yeah. what can they do to take advantage of that? Right. Is there is there anything that they can do? So what what do you think it is that made the the switch flip? And then what can job seekers who are still struggling do to take advantage of that and maybe get get themselves a job? Yeah. So I think um, it's there's a lot of this uh, recalibration in the whole uh, workplace. And I just actually was at lunch today with a friend. We were talking about this, Ira. There's been a such a reset. So people uh, want more of a work-life balance and more of a, um, you know, healthier way of life or more time with their kids and not having to commute. And also we've, we've shown uh, as an employee that, that they've been more productive working virtually. And so we have that dynamic going on um, where, you know, they don't necessarily want to go back to the, uh, to the office and, and work there. Uh, they want to um, just have this more this this flex flexibility uh, model. Uh, so so there's that going on, and and for the candidates too, it's um, they are um, there, there's there's a weird disconnect though right now because companies are finding a hard time finding talent, believe it or not, regardless of the industry they're in, and then yet there's many many candidates that are job seeking and not able to get the uh, offers are not able to get through, uh, you know, the interview process. So there's a, there's just a lot happening. I don't really know what, um, kind of what, where the disconnect is, but it's, it's a, it's an, it'll be interesting to see, I think over the next six months to a year, how this evolves and how we, um, how we come out of this and reemerge, because I know employees and candidates want more of a a healthier work-life balance is basically what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny though, for me, that would seem to be, so there's this thing that I keep hearing about the great resignation of 2020, yes. right? Yes. That to me would seem like there would be more job openings. Yes. Right? Well, I mean, maybe that's, maybe that's what it is because people are resigning. They're saying, you know what? I want to work from home, which for the longest time we all were under the assumption or we were told whatever, however you want to phrase it, that that was just not possible because people would goof around, they wouldn't yeah. get anything done. And then we've seen statistically that's actually not accurate. They're, the country has very, been very, very productive with this work from home mentality. And who wants to sit in traffic and give up all that free time? Yep. Because, you know, I used to commute when I was in the Bay Area, I used to commute up to six hours a day, three hours one way, three hours the other way. Now, it wasn't every day. Sometimes I would be able to commute for an hour because I was going to a different spot. I was in outside sales. So I didn't always have to go to the same spot every day. But the fact is, you know, now I'm walking two hours a day every day, Monday through Saturday, and I'm getting all this exercise. I feel better. Like yeah. it, I would never want to get rid of that to get back in the car and sit in that traffic. Plus, I'm spending a lot less in gas, wear and tear on my car. Yeah, my chance of my chance of um, uh, a crash, you know, a wreck is gone down. I mean, all there's all yeah. kinds of different stuff. Plus, I'm healthier, so all yeah. all the way around, I I would never want to go back. Uh, yeah. Anyways, we got a review request. Yay! Awesome. Baba Tunde actually was on the show. I think it was last week, and so we're gonna 
pull him funny. up and we're going to yeah. see what he did. Um, yeah. So it's kind of fun. So this is, this is the fun thing again, guys, if you are watching and, you, and you're a little bit shy, i we're going to go easy on you. We're not going to pick yeah. on you. We right? won't bite. We promise we won't bite. No. We yeah. Won't bite. yeah. But, but, but the fact is, you know, then we can see what you do. And guess what? Now he's been on my show twice. He's going to be seen by thousands of people two different times, two different weeks. You know, he's increasing his chance of getting a job. Plus, he and I connected because he was on the show. I think he was a second level. But because, you know, he was willing to do the work, I had a spot open up. And I said, you know what? I'm going to reward the people that I are actually active, not right. just people who say, hey, I'd love to connect with you. I've never seen them before ever. You yeah. know what I mean? So yes. that's what got him uh, in my network, which is pretty cool. So yeah. first, first and foremost, I told him, I actually think that's a great profile photo. That's a great yeah. one. Yes. Love where it. He, now, where he's at in the UAE, I don't know if you deal with, you know, outside the U.S. at all. I Because of Project Help It Grow is a global thing, I have deal with people everywhere. I do know this, and this is the advice I give everybody. Make sure you know what the local standards are. Because, for example, in India, in the UAE, having a big smile can be seen actually as unprofessional. So you just have to be careful. But what I like about this is where he doesn't have a big cheesy grin on his face, he's showing you enough that he's friendly, that he's not intimidating. And I think that's a good thing, right? So you want to show yeah. yourself prof professional and friendly, even when you can't have a big smile. But you know, when you can, I think it's good to yeah. To the teeth. That's a so great picture. Yeah. yeah. The only thing that I would suggest, there's two things on profile photos that you're trying to accomplish. You're trying to show that you're professional, right? Which you've clearly done. The other thing is I'm trying to build that rapport. So I'm trying to get people to know who I am. Like if I walk in the room, I want you to know it's me. Now I have these big buck teeth and these big white glasses and this beautiful <laughs> bald head. So most people do know it's me when they see me. But for most of you, like the profile photo on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on all the social medias, that can be like a really good asset for you to increase your recognizability when you walk in the room. So make yeah. sure it's a current photo, which I believe this is. Anyways, that's a little bit of a diatribe. I do that. Sorry. Yeah. I like the fact that, again, I think he had just the LinkedIn standard cover photo last time. So we've got this. Again, what I would recommend doing, I think we talked about this, is put somewhere on here because your Microsoft is certified, right? I would put that here in Canva in like a bright red letters or something that contrasts with this photo. Because I do like the photo because it's, again, mm -hmm. it's a professional environment. I just think that adding a little bit of, because you're a job seeker and you don't want to lose somebody off the hook that six, seven seconds, you don't want them to leave and not know what you're doing. But you did a an amazing job with your headline now. I think it's perfect. Uh, Liz, you can look at it and let me know if you yeah. would recognize, recommend any changes. But basically what I told him is, this is your grocery list of qualifications. This is why that I would hire you, right? And I think you know the most important things got to go first. Mm -hmm. So you put the 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 Microsoft Azure certified because that's the most uh, that's the thing that's going to qualify you for the job above the other candidates. So that goes first. So yep. I think it's I think it's good. I did tell him to work on this. Three hundred twenty seven connections, not a lot. Yeah. So on LinkedIn, you. You want to try to get at least up over that 500 level as fast as you can. Um, you know, yeah. I don't know what the average account size is anymore. It used to be hover about a thousand. So, you know, I would say if you can get to a thousand now, I do things on Fridays to help people build their networks. Every Friday I have a, a thing I do called follow you Friday. And if you do the hashtag, you can actually go see previous weeks. But in that, what I do, it's basically just the open networking. It's like, hey, if you want to grow, they want to grow. All you got to do is jump in the comments and tell people like, hey, I'm willing to connect with you. And just show, again, show yourself friendly, but you're not going to try and sell them something as soon as they connect with you. You're not a weirdo. If you can show them all those things, most people will connect with you, right? So I, I do, I say, hey, jump in the comments, be friendly, and then send them a message to say, hey, I'd love to connect with you. I saw you on Iris Follow You Friday uh, networking event. And you don't have to do mine. You can, There's tons of them. You pick yeah. one, do that stuff. That, yeah. That, I just want to add something. You're right about the, you know, the connections. I'm looking at. Uh, sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name here, but Babatunde, Babatunde. I think that's right. Um, 
yeah, sorry if I if I botched that there, but some some companies put so much emphasis on how many connections you have. And 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 I think, I mean, it's important, yes, but but sometimes, believe it or not, it, it can be a uh somewhat of a deal breaker if if you know if the, the number of connections are not where they perceive it should be. So which is which is sort of uh I mean, it's it definitely want to grow your network, but it shouldn't prevent someone from getting an interview, is what I'm trying to say. So, but some some companies put a lot of emphasis yeah. on that, you know. So, yeah. Well, I think in the IT space, he probably doesn't have a lot of pressure for that. If you have a, a sales type of a, a role, a customer service type of role, they probably expect you to have a little bit yeah. larger network. Yeah. And so, I don't know that somebody wouldn't hire. Like, if you were the perfect candidate, they probably would still hire you. But the fact is, because we, we've talked about it, it's competitive, you're yeah. probably going against a bunch of other people. And what's what are the tiebreakers? Yeah, that's one of the things that could be the tiebreaker is, hey, this person has a built in Rolodex. Exactly. They're, they're yeah. Awesome, you know, and for yeah. those of you who are too young to know what a Rolodex is, that's what yeah. us old people used to put our business cards in to to keep. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Yes. I haven't, I haven't heard that in a while, but I, I know, I know exactly pre, what it is. Pre CRM, pre everything. Yeah. I'm old yeah. school. I used to have shoe boxes, Liz. I didn't, I didn't <laughs> buy the, I didn't buy the Rolodex. I had shoe boxes. My wife used to laugh at oh, me. That's so funny. Yeah. Yeah. Remember the Rolodex. So, sorry, I see. I Here's, think yeah, so, a question. Yeah. Or, or I actually, this is, this is a good time to talk about this. So this is a great question. Um, I'm going to do face to face here for this one. There's a couple different points where you can get stuck in a job search. And I think the very first one that, that people get stuck in is they read the job description, the G, the JD for those of you in the business. JD, you know, yeah. like, to, like to abbreviate. So they read the job description and they think, holy crap, this is like the perfect job for me. They apply and then they don't hear back. So Liz, what would you say the number one thing is if that happens? What's what's the most likely suspect there? You know, it, it is usually because of all the automation that is out there and with all the AI and the bots and the robots that unfortunately uh, they don't even give you an auto response. Uh, unfortunately, that, that they should uh, they should at least give some response or acknowledge that you've applied. Right. Yeah. But but. Uh, well, a, lot of, a lot of companies do have that. Hey, we received your yes. resume. Right. So yeah. I think if they don't do that, that's that's a sign that that's a bad company. You don't really want to work for them. Yeah. They don't have their stuff together. Yeah. But I, I think mean. when you think that you are the perfect candidate and you submit your package and you don't get not that email, not that, hey, we we. Yeah. <laughs> we got your we got your application. We'll be in touch if we're interested. If we'd like to move forward, we'll be in touch. That's usually right. something along the lines of what it says, right? But the number one issue I'm finding is that their resume is not ATS compliant. Right. Yeah. So they're getting rejected before they are ever even considered because they've break they've broken a faux pas. And whether people think it's fair or not, first of all, I grew up learning that life is not fair. So, you know, maybe yeah. some of you guys need to learn that. But life isn't fair. So the onus is really on you, the job seeker, to make sure that your application is going to get through that ATS because the ATS has become so commonplace yep. that you just should expect that they have it. Really, the companies that don't use ATS anymore are almost all smaller startup companies or maybe they're multifamily, multi-generational companies with like, you know, 25 employees or less. If yep. you're if you're talking to any type of an enterprise company, any government agency, any major corporation, they're using an ATS. Right. I just, it just is what it is. Now, you don't know which one, and this is a huge thing for people to understand. First of all, ATS, applicant tracking system, right? So yeah. you've got this, this auto, uh, what's the word, the AI, the artificial intelligence. Yep. That's basically there to help. It's not just a screening process. A lot of people think that's all it is. Like, no, that's just one component of it. It's really designed to help track the applicants from the moment the job description is created to the time that they hire. And mm -hmm. all the different candidates and all the different steps along the way, the background check, the drug screening, you know, the first interview, second, third, fourth, whatever, all that stuff. The resume is part of it. 
the screening is part of it, right? Yep. So yep. that's what it's designed to do. Right. Most, most people are not getting through that first because they're not using uh, the right fonts or they've yep. got, you know, lines and pretty artwork and, and all this stuff in the, in the system doesn't know what to do with it. Yeah. Graded as part of that. And maybe yep. we could go in more depth. Yeah. Later on this. But the fact is, if you are applying for jobs, you're not revising your resume package, your, your cover letter package for each individual job. That's likely why you're not getting a response from the hiring managers. It's a long winded answer, but it's technically yep. so important because a lot of people don't understand that to think, okay, I hired Liz or maybe like my friend, Kurt Tompkins or anybody to write your, my resume. They're a professional. And so I'm just going to leave it and use that de facto, so, you know, now professionally written resume for every job and I'm going to get a job faster. Like, no, what you're going to do is you're going to get close, but you're going to miss that cut line every freaking time. And you're never and you're going to be frustrated because you spent, you know, three hundred dollars or five hundred dollars having somebody write your resume. And it's good. But what you really have is a master resume. Right. You still need to massage it for the individual. Yep. Uh, job. Yep. And, and these um, some of these systems, Ira, are so sensitive. It might be, for example, that um, if you have your degree, if you have a if you have B.A., for example, or Bachelor of Arts yeah. versus uh, if you spell that out, Bachelor, you know, of O.F. Arts, yeah. it, it might even auto reject you if, right. if if the system might prefer B period A versus Bachelor of Arts. It's it's so. Uh, it's so sensitive in that in that regard. So uh, really uh, critical first first step. So I'd never like to leave people hanging. OK, what does that mean? Like, I don't want to leave you in a lurch. I just scared the bejesus out of some people. I totally get it. We did. We did pronounce uh, between days uh, name. Right. So yes. that's good. OK, awesome. So what I want to do is I just want to show you guys where you can get this information for free right now. And you don't have to um, be petrified or do it incorrectly. So I wrote this blog a while back, but it's still relevant. Okay. So it's called the ATS screening strategy, how to earn an interview. In this, I talk about the fonts. I talk about uh, the file types. I talk about all kinds of stuff. There's a whole list here, keywords, resume, you know, how to rank. Because basically what happens is you get through the screening and you're assigned a score. And then they have a cut line. Let's say they're going to do 25 interviews or they're going to do 50 interviews or they're going to take the top 50. So you might have been really good. But the fact is, as Liz said, 300 people applied for the job and you were just below the cut line. Oh, that sucks for you. But they don't communicate that and tell you like, hey, you were really close. We just had people that were better. And that doesn't usually dawn on people. So anyways, I'm going to put this link in the comments for you. Uh, if you're not familiar with the ATS, learn how to improve your resume. Yeah. For the and there's age. also um, tools out there such as uh, job scan. Oh yeah. Uh, so yeah. yeah. In, full, in full disclosure, I use job scan. Uh, I actually reference it in the, the resume in the uh, article, but I use them in a research. I did research for about five weeks on the ATS. I actually reached out to ATS companies. I reached out to Oracle about Taleo and all these different, and that's the number one ATS program in the United States and Europe, at least number one used, but it's still only, you know, 20%, it's 19% here, 18% in Europe. Um, there are so many different variants. And now with the cloud, you know, for the, the, the ones that are using the cloud, they're actually more forgiving. The problem is a lot of companies don't have the latest and greatest. So you really need to be up on what, the most foolproof thing to do if you really were like, hey, I want this job from, let's say, Coca-Cola or whoever, okay? I want to work for Coca-Cola. If you could reach out to somebody and say, hey, do you know what ATS system your company uses? If you could reach out to their HR and find out, then you could go to the manufacturer's website, basically the, the program's website, and you can read all the rules yeah. for that particular one. They'll tell you the font sizes to use. It'll tell you you know, uh, what type of font, like, can you use Romans? Can you use something funky? Yeah. For the most, for the most part, what you want to use is non-serif fonts 
you want to go from font size 10 to 12 and that's it. You don't mm -hmm. want to use any colors. You don't right. want to line. You don't want to have vertical lines. I mean, none of this stuff. Just no graphs. Yeah. Yeah. Think about old school code. That's kind of what you want because why? A lot of people go, well, IRED's ugly. I said, you know what? This is going to blow a lot of your minds. They don't actually look at your resume. You go, what right. do you mean they don't exactly. look at my resume? You know what the ATS does? It takes all of those because the ATS was supposed to help uh, eliminate discrimination, hiring discrimination. It was yep. supposed to help with that. So what they do is they take your resume, they break it down, they insert it into the different uh, components to the different forms, and then they have a standardized view. And then when they're looking on the other end, they're looking at everybody's standardized answers. So the job title's in the same place every single time. The education, it's in the same place every single time. You see that? And a lot of them actually will strip out your name. Yeah. Because now they don't know what ethnicity you are, right? Yep. They don't know if you're male or female. And that's supposed to make it better. But if you don't format your your resume correctly, that's why you're not getting yep. uh, the call. Because yep. they didn't actually see it. The human being part of it, you didn't make it to the human being part. You right. have to set it up so it, it it appeals to both the the artificial intelligence and the human being. So anyway, yep. read yeah, no, great advice. Yeah. Yeah, read read this. If you guys haven't read this, read it. Um, if you're not getting interviews, I promise you this is most likely the number one issue right yeah. here. So and, um, on that note, real quick, I know we're almost at time here, but I would recommend having that ATS, uh, very boring, again, no graphs, no colors, uh, resume, and then having a second one yeah. that you can bring in person or you can send after you get through that ATS that might have those additional, um, you know, things that you want to add or, you know, Literally, graphics or whatever. Like you, so. like you read my article, but I know, and I know you didn't, it's just because it's, that's, that's the, that is the right answer, right? That's, yeah. you bring it with you and you say, Hey, look, you know, I mean, you're probably used to this by now, but you know, with the ATS, this one's pretty boring, but here's one that is a little yeah. bit more visually interesting. Same information. The other thing I want to say this while we're on resume so hard, and this has just turned into the resume show, which is fine. Um, make sure your resume matches your LinkedIn. Yeah. A lot of people's resumes are being edited so much. It's kind of like the opposite problem of what I said. You know, the, the, you got the, the, the person who doesn't want to edit because they paid a professional to write it. And yep. so it's the same resume for every, it's like trying to use the same answer C, right? For every question, the answer C. So that doesn't work. But also when you're editing your resume, it has to be factually correct. Like yep. when, we talk, when we talk about editing resumes, what we're really talking about is massaging the keywords from the word that you use to the word that they used. But it, it has to be similes. Like they, yep. they still have to be accurate. So if you're saying like, for example, you know, they're asking for a graphic designer with five years experience. I'm not telling you to fabricate and make it up. It still has to be true. So make sure your resume matches your LinkedIn because I don't know that anybody anymore doesn't check the LinkedIn profile before the interview happens. Totally. Right. Yeah. So the resume and the LinkedIn, I'm going to say most people to get an interview now, you've got to pass both. Yeah. And, and, you know, again, that's just my opinion. I don't know that for a fact, but I talked to a lot of recruiters. It seems like all of us now are checking the, yep. you know, we're checking, we're checking the LinkedIn profile before we would schedule the interview. So yep. make sure, make sure they line up guys. If yep. you're doing a pivot, this is another thing. If you're doing a pivot on link, you know, make sure your, your LinkedIn pivots too. Yep. So again, like I, what I said earlier about the referrals and the, even the, the skills and endorsements that you want the referrals, make sure that those line up with the new moving forward more than the historical because you're not trying to get hired for the historical anymore. You're trying to get hired for the new thing moving new, forward. Yeah, great All advice. Right. Yeah, yeah, we are right at time. I like to keep these to the to the hour. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna just going to give you like a couple minutes here, and you can you can go into any advice or tips or if you want to review a point that we've already covered. Yeah. And then uh, if you guys like this show, we recommend you be ready for next week. Yes. We only did one profile review and we didn't have anybody join us. So this was really Liz and I were talking a lot, mostly Ira, let's be honest. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, okay. well, this is our pilot uh, run, th run through here. Our pilot. Yeah, uh, yeah, we're all good. Yeah. Um, you know what else I need to get? Just order of uh, order of operation clarification. I need to get your logo too, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that in the, uh, I'll put that in the show graphics. 
So oh, we'll yeah. have stuff you grow in and your uh, stuff too. So cool. Yeah, I'll get. I'll definitely get that to you. But this is a great start. I hope we have some more people that'll come forward. Um, you know, ne next week, so we can uh, build on on this. And uh, you know, the only thing I would add is is I know for job seekers, there's um, there's so many different pieces to going through this process. You know, bottom line, there's there's no one way to to find a job. You can um, you know certainly apply and use in the ATS system uh, and everything. But taking a step further, and I do a lot of this with a lot of my candidates. Um, is referral get referred into a company um you know there there's many ways the, if you get referred into a company you have a you already have that um you know that thumbs up people know you they can recommend you so that's really powerful um also just go back to linkedin here for a second ira and and having the confidence to go and share your expertise and go on video and share what you know because that's really uh, that branding and that marketing piece is really going to help separate you from the piece of paper that might say, you know, have your credentials and have your work history. It's the the personality and who you are behind that piece of paper that uh, really is so powerful and important um, part of this whole process. So uh, to your point, um, points earlier about uh, coming on video and getting comfortable with that. And what's interesting, there was an article I shared uh, I read, I don't know if you saw it on LinkedIn, um, it was in last week weekend's journal, how through this Zoom environment, in, in many ways, a lot of people have blossomed um, mm -hmm. and feel more confident in speaking up or doing presentations. And, and then, uh, so it's interesting to see how it's really, um, some people really have thrived in it. And some people don't, don't like it and haven't, but um, that really helps whether you're interviewing or whether you're in a position where you need to do more public speaking or uh, presentations. So um, being confident and getting on video. Um, I know we have a question here, Iris. Should we read the question? Yeah. If, you, if you have time, I do. I really like yeah, this. I have time. Yeah. So the question says, any advice for making a connection? Uh, so they made a virtual connection interview, and now they want to transmit the, the energy and enthusiasm to the face-to-face. And I think you just touched on it, right? So, mm -hmm. what I if if Chris, if you saw the answer that I was giving uh, Babatunde earlier about uh, the photo, the profile photo, like for example, I don't want to pick on you, but your photo is a little bit dark, and your face is a little bit small in the photo. So, if it was me, what I would do is I would I would either take another photo with a smile on my face, or I would put that in Lightroom, and I would increase the exposure level, just brighten it up. And then I would also crop and zoom in just a little bit. One of the things that you really can do is take advantage of the photographs and the videos on social media, because when you go into a room, there is, there's subconsciously when they're familiar, like they're familiar with your face. I'm going to tell you when Liz and I met for the first time face to face, there was no unawkward. We hugged each other right away. Right, Liz? I yeah. mean, yeah. Because we had seen each other so many times in video and photographs. Like, yeah, you're probably not going to walk into an interview and hug somebody. That's probably not going to win you any points. <laughs> Might be a little bit. Yeah. But, you know, it could be like a high five. I'll tell you, like, for example, I was just in Phoenix uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. Just so just yesterday and the day before. And I was meeting with uh, a client to do a photo shoot. Burtis, I had never met him before. So I meet with him. We hugged right away, too, because he and I, again, like Liz and I, we've talked lots of times. But while I was there, I had one of my LinkedIn connections reach out to me and goes, hey, Ira, you know, if you have time, I would love for you to come over and talk with me and the owner of my company about helping us. And so I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I could do that. I've got time. So I went over and I met with them. And because he had seen me so many times, right, he, I mean, he just walked me right into his the big conference room and it was all smiles and everything. And it was totally, totally easy, but yep. people see me on video all the time. So I think that we've addressed this. That's really the bridge between yep. the virtual and the real world is that real face, but also don't forget the importance of the smile. Show your teeth. Nobody has worse jacked up teeth than me. If I can show my teeth, you should show your teeth. Like you can do, I promise you can do it, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, that's great advice, Ira. You know, and just going back to that, you know, sort of branding and marketing yourself, Chris, you know, on video or through your content, you really 
learn so much about that person through that 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 messaging and who you are. It really you can tell so much about a person. So you already have that level of of oh yeah, I already know this person, and yeah. it's so so powerful. Like Ira said when we when we met, and uh, and it was great. So um, familiarity, familiarity yeah. is yeah. so important. Yes. Right? And that's one of the reasons why it's almost like I've locked in myself into these white glasses. Like I have seven pairs of glasses right here. I've got blue. <laughs> I've, got, I've got blue here and I've got green and gold and I've got red and I've got black. I mean, I've got all these colors, but like, yeah. I wear the white ones all the time now because that's what people know. Yeah. Like that I'm the guy with the white glasses. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's okay. And yeah. maybe you have a thing too, like my friend, my friend, Brian Burke now, He's called Brian the Mac Man. Uh, he always wears a blue suit. Oh, I know Brian. Yes, and yeah. I yes, I know him just from LinkedIn. I have never spoken one to one, but I already I know exactly who you mean. Yep, yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. So that's the kind of thing that you know, like if you're looking to if you're looking to bridge that gap, that's one yeah. of the things that you can do is get like a thing that's your thing. You know, yep. it could be a, a color shirt, a hat, whatever is appropriate. I didn't look at your profile, so I don't know what line of work you're in but you know i mean you could have something like that and maybe it's a hashtag i mean yep. it could be all kinds of things you could have a, a a certain backdrop that you always have that helps too i mean yeah at the end of the day you just want to communicate that you're friendly like i said the number one thing that i'm recommending that most people aren't doing right now is that intro video three minutes or less on your featured it's the number one thing that should be like the very first thing i think yep. you know tell people who you are what you do what you bring to the table, especially as a job seeker, right? And mm -hmm. give them a give them a glimpse of your personality because that's the number one question. When we're hiring somebody, it's really simple. I don't want to disturb the apple cart. My culture, my team's culture is too important to put at risk. So the more I know and the more confidence I have that you are going to be an addition to the team and not a drain on the team, then I'm more likely to not only hire you, but pay you more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Great, great advice. Hopefully that helps uh, Chris and I'll, I'll take a look at your, uh, at your profile also. If I can help. Yeah. Out. And so. he said, he's going to, he's going to update his profile photo and uh, join us again next week. Chris, what I would say is next week, jump on camera with us, brother. Yeah. And then you'll have a video and uh, yeah. it'll be even stronger. Then you don't have, then you don't have to do homework. Then I'll do the homework for you and I'll send it to you all pretty and all that stuff spliced up and then you can just insert it um and i'll even if you do that i'll even make a post about it how about that Looking yeah forward. it's a pleasure yeah all right liz any final, final thoughts before we go uh I, this was fantastic ira i think we did a good pilot run through i'm i'm hoping we'll have more people come up with us i think we will next week so this is a great intro and i'll reshare this and wonderful to be here so thank you so much this is I'm great gonna make a little i'm gonna make a little clip saying you need to get on here and get on video so you can be seen by thousands of people i think we'll get some people oh yeah 100 percent i'll we'll recruit some people i i, I can uh, zero that? free so i know it's uh it's a no-brainer but no this is fantastic wonderful thank you you're welcome. Thank you. Okay. I look forward to doing this again next week. Have a great evening. You're in New York. So it's, have you eaten dinner yet? You probably have to go. No, again. not yet. I, uh, I'm, I'm going to do that in a few minutes here. So yeah. yeah. Say hi to your husband for me. I will. I will. Thank you. I would say hi to All Alicia. Right. And All right, everybody. See us again next week. Same time for next week. We yeah. may adjust the time because you know, if it works better, but we'll, we'll let you know, we're going to do it at least next time. Uh, 3 PM Pacific. 6 p.m. Eastern. It will stay on Thursday. That's the day for sure. And uh, we'll have some updated graphics next time with uh, Liz's logo in it too. It'll yes. be good. So, all right. And awesome. what I need to do, I need to do a little animation for you so that we can do both. I did that for Joe, the finance guy for my Joe show. Oh, amazing. Yeah. I so, yeah we'll, do so, we'll do something like that. So uh, anyways, I always, I always ask in the beginning, where are you from? Let us know because it's always cool to see. We got people from all over the world. It's a lot of fun. So love it. Yeah. All right, Liz. Thank, thank you so much. We'll see you guys next time on Job Seeker Spotlight with Ira Bowman and Liz Capanz. Yep. Thanks, Ira. Thanks, guys. See you soon.